Hi everyone. Finally, we're here. The day I can finally feel like I can reveal my new art room. So come join me for an overview of what I've gotten accomplished these past few weeks. Here we're in the hallway leading into it. And first I'm going to spin you around here. Sorry about that. To the back of the door to see that I, yes, in fact, did go ahead and use the same system for my punches. I really just can't improve upon that system. And I don't really intend on getting too many more, so I think it'll be fine, at least for now. All right, back around. Take you to the little anteroom here where I've got some of my oil paintings, the Four Seasons, that I did many, many years ago. I've got a little metal cabinet from Hobby Lobby that I keep all of my assorted clips in. It's out here, but I know where it is and I know what's in it, so it's okay that it's not that convenient. It's just a really good spot for it and it looks really decorative. Some other, uh, let's see, it was one of my first journals that I made, Steampunk. This is a card from Sigita, Sigita's Coffee Stains, one of my favorite artists. My first journal that I actually finished, and that one, there is um, a video showing a flip through of that, my Journaling by Fives video. If you want to take a look, I'll link that below. A little acrylic painting I was doing for uh, some commission work. This cabinet here is mid-century, and I try to keep things in it that I don't use on a regular basis because it is really old. It's my age. So uh, I'm afraid of it totally falling apart. I just really keep my watercolor card blanks and chipboard and spare envelopes. Those types of things in there. It's not real exciting. Anyway, let's let's go on in. All right, I've got a uh, to-be-filed basket, which is nice and empty. It won't stay that way for long, but it's nice to look at it now. Underneath are photo albums and photo albums and more photo albums and photos that span, oh goodness, at least 50 years. I'm currently redoing them into uh, kind of journaling scrapbook type of things. It's kind of a hybrid maybe of the two. But I had no idea how long that was going to take when you're talking that many photos. Wow. It'll probably keep me busy the rest of my life. Let's see. Below that, most, okay, let me, let me start up back by saying this cabinet here is all paper of one sort or another. Books, yeah, tons of books for um, either junk journal fodder or collage fodder or that I want to actually use the book itself for a journal. Uh, then, like I said, the photos. And there's a couple of, well, three of journals that are in progress right now. And one various... Uh, degree to another. Some are, you know, barely started. Some are you know, getting along. Hopefully there'll be a flip through on a couple of them fairly soon. Ah, uh, let's see. This is binding and all kinds of uh, book smithing materials and some watercolor paper that I'm going to bind into some journals. That one I haven't actually started using it. It'll probably be some kind of collage fodder, I suspect. There's napkins to be used in decoupage and that type of thing. And then there's a better view of those journals and it spans all the way back in there. These are books that I want to make into journals because I really like them for one reason or another. And here's another of Sigita's beautiful work. If you've never seen her, I'll link her channel below too. 
I'll link Nick the booksmith too because she's the one that got me started in uh, higher end junk journals might be a good way to put it. Okay, that's some more collage fodder and down and over. It continues. I've got a lot, a whole bunch of dictionaries down in there. That's all botanical. That's all like National Geographic's. more journals that I'm working in the middle of and they, they span way back in there too. This is, uh, for those of you who know Carla Caged Fish, this is a three-tier junk journal that hopefully I'm going to have that one soon, uh, finished real soon so I can do a flip through of that. But I'll also link Carla below as well. You've got to check her out. Her collages are just incredible. And she's been a great inspiration to me. Collage fodder that's yet to be uh, designated into their little homes, which are up here at the top. There's all kinds of tissue paper. I've got patterned tissue paper and solids. There's doilies and lace. Another little artwork of mine that I had made years ago. And then we come down here. I've got four cubbies of my calyx unit here that I have separate boxes for each color. Roy G. Biv and then neutrals uh, where I've put all of my ribbons and embellishments by color because that's just the way I think is by color. If I'm looking for something, yeah, it might be by category, but then within that category is definitely by color. Uh, let's see, these binders here, I've got stickers, and a bunch of tiny collage fodder is all in that. And that was also uh, inspiration by Carla as well to use a binder for those little tiny pieces so they don't get away. And, oh goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stuff for my rack when I uh, update it, that's all going to go in there. And then over here, we've got stencils. And I've got them by Anthropology, which is anything man-made. I've got Flora and Fauna. And then I've got circles, squares, and other kinds of shapes. All of my stencils separated out in binders. More collage fodder and papers and old books that have been torn apart. And they continue on. Here's all my children's books and all my golden books. Those are going to be made into junk journals as well. You know, like I mentioned before, all of my millions of ideas that I have percolating in my brain. All right, this unit right here has all of the various collections that I've been putting together over the years. I've got ones that are like, you know, like um, commercial ones like Prima, Epiphany, or printery or almanac, or I've got romance novel. But then I've also got things like beach, road trip, up here, memorabilia, and Alaska. For those of you who don't know, I, we used to live in Alaska for much of my life, and so a lot of the journals I'm going to be making will have that focus with all the photos. And then we come around to the next wall. This is where I've got the credenza printer and printer papers are all stored there. I've got a uh, montage of my various mixed media artwork from over the years. It was fun to be able to get it all on one wall. I've had it just in various places and stacked before, so it's really wonderful to be able to see it all together. And on the credenza below, I have, let's see, starting over in this corner, I bring over here. I've got all of my solid cardstock and then printed cardstock. Continuing on with paper pads and then all my artist papers, mixed media and watercolor. All my watercolor paints. More patterned paper and the small paper pads. 
all of my art inspiration books and coloring books and watercolor paper um, that's already printed on and watercolor pencils and then up on top next to the printer I've got my rack I was talking about that I'm going to be updating right now it's, it's just not really usable the way it is and I just have to rethink it all but I've got some ideas and I'm gonna visit that once I've got some time probably won't be till the first of the year now at this point things are all kind of full speed ahead for everything that I've got going on next to it is a little rack that of course the cat bed is on top next to the window we have to keep certain things for cats or they will move things off to make room so it's better to go with the flow my paper and a watercolor easel my zetter bind it all and then all the other things that go with the zetter bind it all and then the laminator and then coming around sorry I'm spinning you to the next wall let me give you an overview of that and that's where I kind of made up my desk to be filming projects or flip throughs and I've got my calendar and my inspiration board over in the corner and my tripod with I've noticed a bunch of people using these poster boards that you can get at Hobby Lobby so I went ahead and got one of those it's way better than looking at that <laughs> and I've got my laptop and behind the laptop it's a little carport for my sewing machine to keep it fairly safe I've just got random things either things that mean something to me up there uh, or a bunch of little odds and ends buttons and clips and threads of various colors handy to have while I'm making projects. Here's my little uh, metal organizer that I had shared briefly the last time when I was showing you the before. And so I kept that the same, of course. That's just too useful the way it is. All right, then we come around to the other window with the cat ledge and kitty treats and water. But yeah, yeah, you see it out there with bird feeders because of course the cats need entertainment too all right and then underneath this desk well let's start over in the corner here I'm swinging it around again I got all my bigger uh cutting boards the mats mats that um uh, from back when I used to do quilting I've hung on to those because they're still all very useful oh we have the cat wanting to play here hey Callie <laughs> and some scraps of fabric in case you know it seems like it would be useful for my project at hand there's all the rest of my fabric piled into that container let me come over underneath and sticking out on the side here I got two iris rolly units for the those beautiful iris containers there's, believe me, these will be full. I just haven't gotten there yet. But anyway, they're they're too deep, but they're on wheels, so I can pull them out. Is it ideal? No. But, you know, once I finally get some of these, like this Gypsy Journal, uh, Autumn Botanical, Graphic 45 Botanical Tea, World Travel, once I get all those things made, that can go somewhere else, and that would be great. But in the meantime, it's just going to park there. Now, I already sh had shared this, that this was going to be for my... Uh, dies and then underneath embossing folders and then all of my sewing stuff this little pochade that my husband had made for me years ago is done it's like triple duty at this point so it's got all my sewing stuff okay and then we come over to the old desk which is now my cutting station love it it's already been working out. As you can see, I'm already working on some projects. And then a place for my die cutting machine. Underneath, more collage fodder and my little sorter on top. 
And let's see, this unit here, I've got my jelly plates on top and small ones in, in that drawer there. And then this is just various, like that's foam, and sheet protectors, oh, labels, probably more label, yeah, more labels. And yeah, more labels, <laughs> various sizes. And then here is all my gel plate printing stuff, either stuff that I've collected that seemed like it would be really fun to use or uh, these types of things that I bought along, along the years. Way in the back there are a bunch of canvases that right now, it's just not a season where I'm painting much, unfortunately, but fortunately too, because, you know, I'm doing all these other wonderful things, but they're there because I know I'll, I'll I've never totally given up painting before and I, I'll be back to it eventually. These drawers in the desk, this one's for paper cutters and envelope. There. This is just miscellaneous stuff that I had no idea where else to put it, so yeah, it's in there. Over in the corner, I've got all my rolled paper. And it's a really good spot for it. You can hang out and not be in the way. This is a bunch of extra bins to use for sorting or whatever. All right, and then we take you to the final wall. Well, the final wall. And this calyx unit is all for wet media. So, starting here, I've got inks. And ink pads, and my distress oxide pads, and then in here are a bunch of blanks that my husband cut for me, a la Nick the booksmith for making journals, covers. And I got my gessos and that type of thing in there, and then we're at Distress Oxide Reinkers. Yeah, Reinkers. Delusions Paints, mostly. That's just stuff I want to use up. That's why it doesn't have a better home than that. It's just hanging out there. I want to get that used up. It's a lot more fun using the reinkers. And those are just the daubers that go with the, dis the delusions. And then we got Craft Paint and Blick. A matte acrylics and golden fluent acrylics and Dina Wakely heavy body acrylics with just some miscellaneous little bottles of stuff in the corner there and then we come over to here bunch of miscellaneous stuff foam plates bubble wrap filters all kinds of <laughs> junk that I'd rather not look at so I'd rather look at the pretty bin and then down here, parchment and wax paper and non-stick sheets. And then this is a whole thing of adhesives. They're just all piled in there. Score tape and tape runner. And we got alien stuff in the corner there. And here are my metallic paints and alcohol inks. And then below there is brush out liquid pearls and stickles in that little box. And below there are all my gels and Mod Podge and that type of thing. So here's the book press that my husband made for me to help with binding, certain types of bindings, I should say, of books. And a bunch of more miscellaneous that, you know, some of it you just don't know where you're going to put it. So just throw it in a bin, throw it in a cubby, and call it good. Embossing powders. And heat gun. Watercolor pens and pastels. Intense blocks and pencils. And all of my pens and markers and highlighters and crayons. And then we come up to the top. This is all the rest of my acrylic paints. All by Roy G. Biv and then metallics. Embroidery floss and some embroidery books for inspiration. 
all of the tapes, tape rolls that I have. I forgot to mention my washi tape also lives but now by color in those boxes I'd shown you earlier. I had seen that by Janet of RTS Scrapbooking uh, about putting even washi tape in those boxes and I thought that seemed like a really good idea so I'm going to give that a spin for a while and see how it works for me. And then the last thing over here are all of my stamps by category and I'm going to show that one uh, a little bit more thoroughly too if people are interested on how I went ahead and did that and they're nice and organized inside those boxes now so I think it'll be a lot more useful I might actually use my stamps a lot more often now in the center we start out with a file cabinet here that has assorted ephemera from vintage to botanical to maps all sorts of things and then below is all sorts of just standard papers like lined and dotted and solid and the bookends from old books that's what's in there and this thing is really really old somebody was dumping it and I thought oh well I'll take that and on top I've got my serious paint brushes a lot of my background stamps the ones that I really love and go to all the time. All sorts. Rulers. Paper towels, of course. Must have paper towels. Tiny paper cutter for just those little things when you don't want to go running over to the big one. And another healing, self-healing mat. And then a table. And then coming over to my little cart. This is a tool cart. I got virtually everything I could think of that I would need all the time on top. And I come down to the my blow dryer adhesives. Just you know, various assorted things. And down in there I got some binder rings. And some bins for sorting. Let me come back over. This will be the last time I spin you around. Sorry about that. I've got all my swatches for my distress oxides and my brush O's handy where I can actually fit them and see what they look like. And baggies and wipes and all my tools. Um, you know, genuine tools, screwdrivers and pliers. <laughs> and clips. Okay, let me take you back up. And then just step back. So you can see the, the room at a glance. All right, it has been quite some time in coming, but I am so amazed how it came together. It's exceeded my expectations and I absolutely love it. I look forward to spending hours in here creating and I hope you'll join me. Thank you so much for joining me today as I walk through this. I think that I'm going to be giving some uh, more in-depth tours of certain areas like how I was doing my collage fodder or my color bins, those and my stamp bins, uh, those types of things. If there's interest for it, I will be happy to do that. Thank you so much, and I look forward to hearing your comments. Bye for now.